head coach uh, Chamberlain from the University of Dayton. He's going to be starting his 13th year as the head coach of the Flyers. And I uh, had an opportunity to speak to him a little bit earlier. And he actually has a connection to Joe Lombardi from our staff. So I'll turn it over to him and um, maybe he can talk a little bit about that connection and then uh, about coaching Adam and uh, what he thinks the Saints are getting. Coach, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Doug. So first off, um, how do you know uh, Coach Lombardi and where have your paths crossed? And then uh, a little bit about uh, Adam. Well, uh, Coach Lombardi, he actually coached here at the University of Dayton in uh, from uh, 1996 through 98, and it was his first coaching job in college. Uh, he was uh, at the Wright Pat uh, Air Force Base. He was in the Air Force at that time, and so he joined us as a part-time coach and did an outstanding job for us for three years, and then he got out of the military and was able to then start making his move throughout uh, the uh, coaching profession. But we've kept contact throughout those years all the way through. And he actually married a young lady from the Dayton area while he was here. So every once in a while, he and his family are able to come by and uh, we're able to, to catch up that way. But uh, we're very excited for Adam. Uh, this is a dream come true for him, I'm sure. And uh, it's really great for the University of Dayton and for our football program. As you can imagine, uh, we don't get much exposure like this too often. Great. Um, can you talk a little bit about when he originally came to your program? I think he was a high school quarterback. Is that accurate? That's right, Doug. He uh, was a quarterback at a very small high school up in Michigan and uh, athletic. He was the, the, the best athlete and he was actually the, the biggest player out on the football field. And we liked him as a quarterback. But in the back of our minds, we always felt like he could probably grow into being a, a tight end for us. And so he came to Dayton as a tight end, about 6'3", 215, 218. And after a week of camp, uh, he came to me and said, Coach, I think I, it'd be better for me to move to the tight end position. And uh, we as a coaching staff wholeheartedly agreed with that. And, um, Boy, from that point on, we could see a young man just grow each and every year and each and every way to the player that he is now. Uh, Coach, did you guys ever consider uh, putting him on defense when you were looking at different positions for him? We didn't. We just liked the way that he had a feel for the offensive game. I mean, uh, when he was the high school quarterback out there, he had a good understanding of – of uh, where the ball should go when he was throwing it, and when he was running it. And so we just felt like that's where he would be best suited at that size. He's, he's one of the bigger tight ends that we've had at Dayton. We've had some good sizes, but we've never had a tight end that was that size, that big, and that athletic. And so we felt like in our scheme, we're very uh, big on tight end play that that's where he could be a bigger factor for us, would be at that tight end position. And how quickly did he acclimate to that uh, position? I tell you, I thought he, he, he grasped it, he worked hard at it, and you could just see that uh, he's an athlete. He can, he can do a lot of things. And, and really when I, it came to me that he could be an outstanding tight end for us, was that year when he was on our scout team. We had a really good defense that year. Uh, we went to the playoffs, and uh, our defense, our secondary especially, was, is rank, was ranked near the top. But he was giving us fits every practice when he was running the scout team tight end. It was hard to cover him, and he was such a big body just to be able to uh, get around him to deflect any balls. And, and again, his athleticism, the, the speed that he ran his routes there, I could really see this was the position form, and he was picking up on, on the nuances of a tight end right from the start. And uh, I guess, do you think that uh, his ability to pick up things uh, quickly is going to help him uh, in the NFL, considering you know that there may not be the same kind of off-season program because of the, the pandemic? 
I, I wholeheartedly agree. Uh, one of the questions that was constantly asked of me through the scouts when they would come through was, how does he learn? How quickly does he learn things? And um, is there still room for growth? And I told all of them, absolutely. Because what the progress I saw I had to make from his freshman year through his fifth year uh, was just each year he got better and better and better to where going into his true senior year, I thought this guy has NFL potential. And it was just because of the time and the effort and the sacrifice he put in, in learning the position. And I think he still has a high ceiling that he can get even better. I'm very proud of the coaches that we have here at Dayton uh, as an offensive staff, as his position coach that he had. But I know that can't compare to the, the instruction and the, and the uh, coaching that's going to be going on now in the NFL for him. He mentioned last night that he's somewhat of a film junkie. Has he always been like that uh, since you started coaching him? And how many players actually, I guess, love watching film? He, he talked about it a few times. He is. And, and he would come in into the meetings and, and, uh, and watch and discuss with the offensive coaches, little uh, uh, nuances that he had seen and, and the coaches had seen. And, and of course, with technology now, our players can sit in their dormitories and watch game film of their opponents and of our game. And um, Adam was always one that was prepared. He was prepared physically. He was prepared mentally each and every week. And it goes back to who he is. He's a, an engineer, electrical engineer. And we find those people to be very disciplined and organized and, and just wanting to stay on top of, of whatever their schedule, whatever they need to do. And so that just fit right into his personality. What does it say about him that, or just the talent that he has, that he's the first guy from y'all shot to be drafted in like 40 years. I know. And, uh, and I can tell you, uh, the, the last person that was drafted here was a teammate of mine, uh, Bill Westbelt. He was a couple years ahead of me when I was a freshman and uh, Bill was an offensive tackle here. So I got to see Bill over a couple years before he got drafted. But we're a non-scholarship program. And so what that means is we're going to get young men that are a couple inches too short, 10 pounds too light, a tenth of a second too slow to get those big time scholarships. And so physically, they just don't match up to be an NFL player. And that's what made uh, Adam so different is that he came in, like I said, about 6'3", 215, 218, but he worked at it. He worked at it with our strength coaches and, and his position coaches, and he just developed to where he is now at 6'5", 255. And, and so when I saw that development, that's what told me this guy has a chance. In all my years, 45 years here at Dayton, he was the one that I looked at and said he has everything. And number one is the physical size to be an NFL player. We've had good players here that have been signed as free agents, but uh, they just haven't made it. Adam had all that, that you would be looking for in an NFL player, the size, the athleticism, the football skills. That's why he, he's the one that's gotten drafted. How, how, did, how many scouts started to come through uh, the school this year and, and, you know, during the week of practice and then, and then at the games too, did, was there a noticeable uptick? Uh, well, that all started back in the spring before his fifth, fifth year, senior year. Uh, we had a couple scouts in, I still remember them from the Ravens and from the Colts and they came in and, and worked at them out. And then they came up to my office afterwards and you know, the typical questions, what type of young man is he? What's his work ethic? What's his family background? All those things. And, and so when I was done speaking with them, they both looked at me and said, coach, you're gonna have a lot of people come through here this year. 
And I said, really? And they said, oh yeah, just in the short workout they had. So from the first day of camp through the end of our season, we were probably averaging five to six scouts every day. And, uh, whole, and at games, there were scouts. Uh, the GM from the Steelers, he was actually at our last home game. I got to speak with him before our game because they were playing the Bengals the following day. And so he came and to check mm -hmm. Adam out. Uh, so that was exciting. That, that hasn't happened here at the University of Dayton. It's, we were saying over 40 some years and uh, to have scouts from all the NFL teams and, and coming back for a second, third time, I think they were having people to make sure that uh, there was more than one opinion about Adam for each team there. But uh, that, that made this year special, to be able to, to have those uh, scouts around. Keep that door closed. <laughs> Of the flies. Did, did you think that um, it was going to maybe hurt him potentially not to have a pro day and for those scouts, the, the cross checkers and things that wouldn't be coming back? Did you think that was going to be a detriment to him? And uh, how, what was your feeling on that? My feeling was when uh, all this uh, pandemics uh, happened and they were closing down uh, the the pro scouts going out and going to the pro days and everything. Cause Adam had six teams coming in the week of uh, that the school closed down uh, here at Dayton. And so I was talking with him. I said, uh, Adam, is this going to hurt you? You think? And he said, coach, I really don't think so. My agent doesn't think so because they've seen me on film. They've seen me at the senior bowl. They've seen me at the uh, combine. And so he felt like he was in good shape, much better shape than some other uh, young men from, uh, from maybe lesser known schools or not as highly ranked that didn't get to show on their pro days. He felt like he had enough out there for the, the teams to make a good judgment on. What kind of person uh, are the Saints getting? Uh, I know you talked about him as a player a lot, but what kind of person are they getting? I tell you, the Saints are getting an individual that, first of all, is bright. Uh, electrical engineer here at Dayton is not easy. And uh, Adam was a very good student, an over a 3.0 student for us. And what they're going to also get is a person that is conscientious. He wants to do things right. He wants to, whether it was his schoolwork, his workouts, his, his football practice, whatever it is, uh, it's important to him to do it right. And there's somebody they can trust. Uh, they really can. Um, that's a big part of our program is can we trust you? Can we count on you uh, when things are tough or when we need uh, someone to step up? And, and Adam was that individual. Right from the start, you could tell this. Uh, uh, like I said earlier, he was just so dedicated to what he wanted to be. And he was willing to make sacrifices because again, he wanted to be the best that he could be. Coach, I saw a video, you, you were talking about the senior bowl earlier. Um, when did you know that, that Adam was gonna get the invite and kind of talk about the process of being able to share that with his teammates when uh, Jim came there? Right, well, Jim emailed me and, and asked me to give him a call uh, because they had uh, Adam on their list to be in the Senior Bowl. So I gave Jim a call, and uh, he told me, he said, what they like to do is some of these players from lesser-known programs to bring a personal invitation to them and not just send it through the mail. And he was asking if that would be uh, available at our practice. And I said, most definitely. And uh, so Jim came up on a specific day. Uh, I told him which would be the best day, and uh, so we had it all arranged. He had the invitation in hand, and I thought Jim was going to give it to him. I was going to call. I had my talk already. I was going to call him up, and um, but Jim said, oh, no, I want you to give this to, to Adam there, and so at the end of practice, I always call the team up to talk about, hey, what we did that day, was it good enough, uh, what we need to do for the coming practice and um, and I started talking into uh, about 
the publicity of the, our, our program and how Adam Troutman is receiving a lot of attention now. And I mentioned about he's even going to get more attention because, uh, Adam, you've been invited to the, the Reese's Senior Bowl. And so everybody started cheering and, and uh, clapping for him, and he came up to receive it. And then I introduced him to Jim there. So it's a special thing uh, for a coach. It was special for me to be able to share that with one of my players. What were your feelings last night when you saw him being drafted? Uh, were, you, were you kind of thinking, hey, it's going to probably go into Saturday here? And were you as surprised as all of us were? Oh, I tell you, when it got down to the last few picks, and I was seeing the teams that still had picks left, uh, I was thinking, well, it's going to happen in the, the next day. I thought, no, no uh, further down than the fourth round. I really did. I thought it, somebody will get him there. But then when the Saints, uh, they popped up and said, uh, we have a trade here. And then to be watching and, and to see the commissioner announce his name, uh, how thrilling, how excited. You would not believe all the text, all the emails I was getting from former players who were just talking how exciting this was to see the name University of Dayton in the NFL draft. And, and uh, they know what type of young man Adam is and how he represents us. And, and for me personally, Doug, uh, I tell our players when they get here that um, they're like my sons. They really are. Uh, we believe that here at the University of Dayton. We are, we are a family and we're successful. We do things right, but they're my sons. And so you can imagine how a father would have felt for uh, 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 one of his sons to receive an honor like that and to know how hard he worked to get to that point. That just didn't come natural, uh, just out of the blue for Adam. He worked hard for these last five years. So very gratifying, very satisfying to be able to witness that. Uh, I text Adam right afterwards because I knew he'd be flooded with everything. But I told him, I, I said, I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to experience something like this before my coaching career was over. That's great. You talked about so many moments that stand out about him. Is there something from, you know, after he transitioned to tight end, um, but early in his career, not necessarily the scout team one that just stands out to you for any reason in particular? Well, there's so many catches that he made in big games and, and big plays and so forth. But I'll tell you, one of the biggest moments that I remember about Adam was not on the football field. It was in the locker room. It was our first game this, uh, this past season of 2019. We're over playing Indiana State, who was ranked 14th in the FCS at that time. The week before, they had just lost to Kansas by a couple points late. And so here we are at their home field playing the, uh, them and their home opener. And I always have our captains give the pregame talk at our first game of the season. And so Adam was the one selected to give the pregame talk. And he talked about how nobody would have any – confidence in us or even believe that we would have a chance today going up against these people and he just went on and on about how his faith and his confidence in this football team was and I'm telling I was getting goosebumps uh, how well he was speaking to the team and how he was getting them fired up because he was genuine you he meant what he was saying he wasn't just saying a bunch of words that the guys needed to hear he believed in what he was saying. And so when Adam got done, all I could say was, let's go. And so we ran out on the field, and we were fortunate enough to win that game. And uh, that's one of the big moments I'll remember about Adam Trout. I'm, I'm curious, you know, you, you clearly look at these players like they're your sons, and uh, it just it's clear how much this team means to you. Has this moment kind of helped you through not being able to have spring football and just – having to be away from the normal the normalcy of your team and your schedule and 
all the things you must miss? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, uh, we have tried to do the best we can with virtual meetings and, and, and trying to keep contact with our players. But the personal relationship is very important to us that Dayton between our players and coaches. And uh, just, it makes it tougher, of course. But to kind of rally around Adam as the buildup was coming on uh, uh, to the draft here and all the reports you were reading about, it, it made the team excited. Uh, I mean, we were supposed to have our spring game last Sunday. That was going to be our spring game. And uh, so we didn't get to have that. But uh, to be ex uh, the anticipation about Adam in the draft year uh, really was energizing the team. And then, of course, after last night, um, the players that I've been speaking with here today, I mean, that's all they wanted to talk about. Uh, there were other matters we wanted to talk, but that's the first thing. And I didn't mind it. Uh, I was hearing from everyone that I was talking with about how exciting that was for Adam, but also for this football program and this university. Coach, what advice have you given to Adam as he heads into the NFL? The, the advice, and, and I tell you, we were very fortunate in that um, his offensive line coach and our offensive coordinator, Austin King, played in the NFL for five years. He was a center, uh, played for the Buccaneers and the Falcons. And then he was coaching at a couple places, and then we got him here. And I, I really felt like Adam leaned heavy on Austin there in how he needed to develop and how to go about his way, especially this year that was leading up to the draft. And I thought he really prepared Adam for what it was going to be uh, in this time uh, up leading up to the draft there. And Coach King, of course, now he's with the Las Vegas uh, Raiders. He's a line coach with them now. So the both of them are heading into the NFL at the same time there. But my own personal advice for Adam would be continue as you are. He has everything he needs to be successful in the NFL. All those intangibles you look for. Sure, he's a great athlete and he can catch the ball and he's got great size, but it's all those other intangibles I've spoken about, uh, his determination and his, his intelligence and just his conscientiousness. Just be himself and he'll be fine. It's I forgot about the John Gruden connection to Dayton. There is. Uh, see, I'm an old man. I've been around here a long time, so I have all these connections throughout the years. John was a quarterback for us in the early 80s and, um, and uh, have stayed with a great relationship with John throughout these years. And uh, so uh, I was disappointed when Austin was going to leave us to go with Coach Gruden there, uh, but I understood what an opportunity for Austin there. But John's a, a flyer. He is. John is a flyer, and uh, we're glad to call him, an, uh, him one of our alumni. That's great. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, one thing, I guess, for one of your guys to land in the NFL, but it's another thing for a guy to get drafted to one of the more successful teams in the league over the past several years. What does that mean to you that not only is he just going in the NFL, but he's going to a winner? I tell you, when uh, going through the draft last night and all the different teams that were popping up and all that, uh, you're wondering, okay, is he going to go there? Is he going to go there? When it turned out to be the Saints, I mean, I was happy for Adam that he got drafted, but it even exploded more the excitement that he is going to the Saints, uh, an organization that I think is first class, quality people, Coach Payton. Uh, he's one of the best. And I told you my relationship with Joe Lombardi. And um, when I text Joe and told him that, hey, you got a good one there. And, and I told Joe, I said, he's a typical Dayton kid. He'll know what I meant by that. And uh, his response to me was, he'll love it here, coach. And I believe that. I really believe the environment, just not, it's just not a winner but I really believe the Saints do it in the right way. And so I'm very happy. Like, again, a father, you got your son going to a good place that he'll be taken care of. Uh, that makes it even better for me. 
fantastic coach we really appreciate your time i'll ask our media assembled here if anybody has any last questions for coach chamberlain before we let him go no nope, that's that's it for me all right, all right. You got everything go ahead. you're going to enjoy adam i i know that you're going to enjoy being around him we certainly look forward to meeting him in person and coach thank you so much for your time you're incredibly insightful and uh, I know speaking for our, our, our media members, uh, we thank you very much for the time and the insight you've provided. Well, thank you, Doug. And, and uh, I told Adam I'm running out and buying me a, a New Orleans Saints jersey now. Well, that sounds like a great thing. We'll let you know what number to buy here as, as soon as we can. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Coach. Thanks, Rick.